Hi everybody, uh, what I'd like to do with you in the Hi everybody, what I'd like to do with you in this video is show you Concord Learning's Hi everybody, what I'd like to do with you in this video is show you Concord Learning's updated version of the Tectonic Explorer learning module. Uh, the original was outstanding uh, and they did an update I think around a year and a half ago that I've just never had a chance to uh, to review. Uh, but I'll show you what I'm talking about in case you've never seen this. If you go to your preferred search engine and type in Concord Explorer, um, this should be one of the very first things that comes up. Tectonic Explorer right there. So I'm going to open this up. There's a, a related link, uh, the Seismic Explorer, which I made a separate video on uh, at around the same time as this one. But uh, that's for a different video. So if we open up Tectonic Explorer, it will bring you to its own website here. And the version on the left is the old version, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's, it's not quite as advanced. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles. This is probably, honestly, more appropriate for younger learners. Um, it depends on how much detail you want to add. Uh, if you want to look at some updates that, that Concord has done since this original version, uh, you can come over here to where it says Plate Tectonics Plus Rock Formation. And I'm going to show you the kinds of things that you can do with this simulator, which are just magnificent, uh, especially as far as uh, inquiry learning. If you're trying to really push inquiry learning, students explore something and figure out where they want to go and try to understand how a system works based upon observing it. Uh, so I really, uh, I love Concord for that reason, but we're going to open up this updated version over here. And when this loads, you have your choice of plates. Uh, again, you can sort of have you or... When this loads, you're going to have your choice of plates. How many plates do you, uh, do you want to use? Uh, I, I teach high school students and I have them stick with two. But uh, you can go more complex. Uh, but if we open up two plates here, uh, what will happen right away is we'll see a globe. Um, and uh, we can we can click over and rotate. We can move around on our globe. Right now there's two plates. We can see this is sort of like a, you know, a ball with a seam running through the middle. Um, what C Concord, what the Tectonic Explorer lets you do is to create continents. Uh, and then to see how those continents interact with each other based on things like density, and to also see what those continents do, and to also see what kinds of rocks, uh, quite specific rocks, uh, are associated with certain plate boundaries and certain regions. Uh, so this is where it gets really exciting when you start identifying rock type specific rocks based on what things are going on. So just let's go, let's look, so let's just look at an example. So let's just look at an example. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a continent here. It's as easy as pointing and clicking with the mouse. Uh, and so what I have done here is I've drawn uh, two plates where I have uh, a continent on one side. This is continental crust along the boundary here. And then where you don't draw anything, you have oceanic crust. And you can also erase uh, portions that you don't like. So if I don't like this portion, I can get rid of it. Uh, but I'm just going to draw a continent right here. Beautiful. And, uh, and now I'm going to click Next. So that's how I want my plates arranged. And I want to select this plate. So I'm going to select this plate. And I can choose Convergent or Divergent. This is one way that the new version diverges from the old one that I wish that they had. Uh, they used to have a transform boundary uh, setting, which they no longer have. Uh, I'm not sure why they got rid of that. But uh, let's, just say, uh, let's just say Convergent here. And it will set up your force vectors in order to reflect that type of plate boundary. So we're choosing smash these two plates together. I'm going to click Next. We can choose the density by order. You can't attach density values, but you can select order. So uh, we're going to say, okay, this continental crust over here on this left plate, we're going to say it's less dense because that's generally what we find with continental uh, crust. And then over here, uh, we're going to say that this oceanic plate is of, of higher density. So now we can click Finish, and it will begin to run automatically. Uh, and I'm going to pause this for a moment before I do anything. Um, so there's a number of, of, of wonderful features here that we can start to play with even before this thing starts to run. Um, you can turn on features such as volcanoes and earthquakes down here in the lower right. Uh, so, so there are times when you might want students to look for those associations between certain plate boundary types uh, and, and certain features and processes such as volcanoes and earthquakes. So you can get those here. Um, and uh, you can also draw a cross section uh, while the simulator is running. So I pause that and, and I can actually go down here to this draw cross-section tool uh, and I can, if I wanted to, I can actually draw a little cross-section. So this is a cross-section running across these plates. And before I go any further, um, you can also change the map type. Uh, I believe this is a new feature uh, where you can actually change the setting from uh, topographic, which is what we have here, uh, to, to uh, just colors 
um, crust age, so uh, you know it shows different colors, sort of signifying different ages of crust. Uh, very important for the concept of seed float spreading. Um, rock type, so in this case, the the type of rock is is illustrated right on the surface of the globe, uh, and then back to uh, topographic. Uh, but I've just created this this cross section, and you can see this from the the side. You can rotate this cross section, so if you wanted to, you can actually reflect a view from a different angle. So uh, uh, here we're looking at this crust from the south, uh, and if I rotate my uh, cross section. We're looking at it from the north now, uh, so you can rotate that around to reflect the angle you want to look at this. So I've got my my little cross section, and I can always redraw my cross section. I can draw it again from there to there, uh, and uh, I can click start. So we see the simulation is now running, and I think of this as a sandbox simulator in that you can really set up everything you want, and it it functions on a very granular bit by bit basis dependent upon your inputs. So if I'd wanted to, I could have drawn a few random islands over here, a few continents, or I could have you know, put a few continents on the rear of the globe here to really kind of see what those uh, would do as they are interacting. Um, one neat uh, uh, thing about this is that the plates will actually break um, as, as pressures mount, uh, and, and let's say there's a sufficient amount of, of tension in a plate, it'll actually crack, uh, and it will actually start to move apart. Or if two plates are getting jammed together by some other plates, they will actually buckle and you'll get things like like mountains. And speaking of which, uh, I'm going to use my little roller here. I can, you can zoom in and out. Um, we can see that, let's zoom out of this guy. We can see that some things are happening on our globe. Uh, we see that mountains have appeared. Uh, there is a key uh, that we can show here. So I'm going to click keys and options. So we have things like height over here on the right side. Uh, sea level, how deep the sea level is. We can notice there's a little bit of a trench forming here. Um, these uh, different colors are mountains, right? And the, the white represents highest, and the green is sort of near sea level. Um, and uh, so we've got all this activity going on. So we have uh, we have earthquakes going on, uh, and we have mountains forming, and we have these two plates moving toward each other. And we can see in our cross section uh, that this uh, this oceanic plate is plunging, right? It's dropping down uh, beneath the continental uh, plate. Uh, and oh, look, we have some uh, some volcanoes forming, and so I wonder why those volcanoes formed. So those are the kinds of questions you can ask students. Why is that plate dropping like that? Um, how come those volcanoes are forming? Why are the volcanoes only showing up on the left side, right? They're only showing up on this side with the continent when we don't see any volcanoes or islands or anything over here. I'll show you two oceanic converging in just a moment. Um, and uh, so we, we have lots of exploration here, but we're not even done. Uh, the, uh, there, you can do all kinds of other things with this. So you can take measurements such as uh, temperature and pressure. Um, so I can uh, use this tool here. So I can use this tool here if I select that. Uh, I can use that on my cross section. It seems like I can only do it on my cross section, but I can bring that up on my cross section and we can see, okay, the, the temperature as I go down, my temperature is going up. We can actually see that. Uh, my pressure is also going up. So you have a little temp thermometer and a little pressure meter here um, that show uh, what the kinds of conditions are. So especially if you're talking about metamorphic rock, metamorphism, okay, depth, you know, affects the, the degree of metamorphism we get. This is a, a good tool to sort of add in here. Um, over here in the key, uh, we also see things like types of rocks and degrees of metamorphism. So the amount of green that you see is the degree of metamorphism. So we see a little bit of contact metamorphism over here on the edges of these little magma plumes. Um, we can see uh, there's some regional metamorphism going on in this plate that's subducting. Uh, we even have what kind of looks uh, like an accretion prism uh, showing up over here uh, just, uh, just to the, uh, the east of our, our continent. Um, so we can do all that kind of thing. Uh, and so I can even go over here and I can take a little sample and look at what kinds of rocks we've got. There's the key over here. Uh, but uh, if I take the sample, let's say I want to know what this black stuff is. So I'm interested in this black stuff that's on the bottom of my oceanic crust. Uh, that's kind of, let's say, near the surface. And what it tells me right away, it comes over here. And up on the key, it says igneous rocks, right? It helps me identify those are igneous because they were formed from uh, a divergent zone elsewhere on this planet. Uh, so basalt, it even identifies the minerals, iron rich, and it cooled quickly. So when you're learning about igneous rocks, that rate of cooling is really important. So we can say, oh, basalt, right? It's going to have really fine crystals. It cooled quickly. It's mafic, right? So it's got a lot of uh, you know, iron and, and magnesium, those heavier metals. Um, and uh, you know, you can tie that in. And you can actually grab an example of basalt and say, hey, this is the rock that you see right there, right? See how it looks like the same thing? It's the same rock. 
Um, or if I were to go over here and take a sample of uh, this pink stuff. I'm wondering what this pink stuff is. Oh, look, granite. So now here's an igneous rock again that looks a little different. It's iron poor and it cooled slowly. So we know we're looking at a, um, a, a felsic rock that has been going at large crystals, large grains. That's all reflected here. It's just such a wealth of information that's all built into this little neat and tidy simulator. Um, and so again, we're not even done. We've got sedimentary rocks. You can go up here on the surface and you can see, oh, you can get things like you know, sandstone and uh, various kinds of sedimentary rocks up on the continent. We can end up with uh, some low-grade metamorphic rocks down here near the subduction zone, the sort of accretion prism. Um, you know, we've, uh, we can look at uh, sediments on the ocean floor. Uh, so if you get the set just right, you can spot those sediments. Um, you can click here and you can, oh, there's magma, right? And again, more information on that. So this is just such a marvelous resource, just from end to end. It's so easy to use. Uh, it's so intuitive. Um, I'm pretty sure it works pretty well on mobile devices, too, so students don't necessarily have to have a, a laptop or a school-issued computer to use this. It works pretty well on, on your phone. Uh, but as promised, I am going to go ahead and take uh, do a slightly different scenario here. So I'm going to sort of refresh here. And to do that, all I need to do go, is to go down here and click Reset Plates. I'm going to click Reset. Again, I'm going to take two plates. Simpler is better, right, if we're trying to understand a complicated system, right, start simple. Uh, instead of creating continent here, I'm just going to leave it, right, we're going to have two oceanic uh, plates. Go ahead and click next. Uh, let's do another convergent boundary. And uh, it doesn't really matter what, let's let's switch up our density, right, just for the heck of it. Let's say this one on the right is the low density plate. So now let's click, click finish. It's going to go ahead and run. Remember now the plate on the right is more dense. I'm going to, even while this is running, I'm going to go ahead and run a section here. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. Uh, and you can go step by step too. It's a very slow, but if you want to kind of slow it down and go just one step at a time, we can do that. I'm kind of going stepwise here. But I'm going to click start. And again, we have a subduction zone situation going on, but there's no continent involved, right? We have an ocean plate slipping under under another ocean plate. We see a lot of the same stuff. Um, and uh, if we wait for a little while, we begin to see the emergence. I'm going to turn on volcanoes and earthquakes again. Uh, we begin to see the emergence of volcanoes. And if we wait, we see that those volcanoes grow into islands, right? So on our to uh, topographic map, we can actually see some little green spots show up over here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and wait for just a moment to let those kind of pop up. Okay, so I've given this a few million years to run, uh, and uh, we can start to see some islands, some volcanic islands showing up there. And I also forgot to mention that these earthquakes, these little circles that signify earthquakes, uh, indicate the strength and depth uh, as well. So we can see that, for instance, at a subduction zone, we find deep, very strong earthquakes uh, associated with these. Uh, oh, and by the way, remember how I mentioned that sometimes plates will spontaneously crack? That has begun to happen here. Uh, my globe has actually started to break into pieces. So uh, I've got the subduction zone, and over here on the corresponding other side of the globe, we have a, a, a divergent boundary. So let's look at this divergent boundary just while we're here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a new cross section. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here and click start. And I'm going to let this go ahead and run. Now we have a whole different situation, right? We have plates moving away from each other, uh, these two oceanic plates. And we have this magma sort of upwelling or where the mantle is sort of rising. Again, this connects to mantle convection, all kinds of different uh, geophysics. You know, what is the density here doing? Why is the mantle rising here when, you know, apparently over here on this other side, it looked like maybe it was doing something else. Um, and so we again, we see earthquakes here. But look, they're red. So they're shallow. Uh, and that's because when we look at this situation, we don't have any really deep tectonic activity. It's shallow tectonic activity. So, of course, any interactions between those plates are going to be shallow. They're going to be near the surface. And uh, also, we're not going to build up a huge amount of pressure or tension because they're moving away from each other. If the plates only have a passing glance moving away from each other, uh, then those earthquakes won't be very uh, big. And uh, if there's no deep tectonic activity, they won't be very deep either. So, I mean, earthquakes, volcanoes, convection stuff, mantle convection, uh, of course, the tectonic aspect, um, you know, the, the evolution of the Earth through time, um, geophysics, you know, there's so much richness in this simulator that you could really go into an enormous amount of depth over the course of a whole week. All right, kids, we're going to start by looking at this aspect, and now today we're going to look at this aspect. Um, don't beat a dead horse, but there's so much you can do with this. Uh, you know, with my students, you know, they really come to some really, really rich conclusions about plate tectonics. And the best part is that it requires very little teaching on my part um, to, to have them to develop some of these really, really good, rich, high inquiry, exciting conclusions um, in, in this nice little handy model that's just right in front of us. So I cannot speak highly enough about the, uh, the Concord uh, Tectonic Explorer. 
Uh, it's an absolutely magnificent, wonderful tool. I really encourage you to go out and look at that if you are uh, a science educator uh, who deals with uh, tectonics. Uh, or if you're a student who's trying to learn it, this is actually very helpful. College students, you know, high school students, middle school students, if you're trying to understand tectonics, you're not sure what to do, Concord uh, Simulator is a great place to start. So uh, I hope that you found this little uh, review helpful for teachers or students trying to learn about plate tectonics.